Ralph Amsley with Devil's Digest out here at Folsom Field with Jordan K. Uh, we just witnessed Arizona State's third loss of the season. They go down 28 to 21. Halftime adjustments by Colorado are probably the story. Uh, but I mean, just what, what's your overall impression of this game? Uh, ASU looked good early on offensively, and uh, and, and late looked bad on yeah. both sides of the ball. Uh, but again, only give up 28 points, and it, it feel, had the feel of an NFL style yeah. kind of smash mouth game that ASU just doesn't come out on the right side of. Yeah, there was a lot of things where it was just missed opportunities, and they had the one fourth down at the goal line that everyone's going to talk about. But then there's just big plays where Colorado's got third and long. And ASU just can't get any pressure on Steven Montez, and he's got all day to throw. And eventually one of his receivers is going to get open, especially Chenault, who just absolutely killed ASU. And I think that's the thing where uh, him taking the direct snaps, I don't know if ASU was prepared for that enough. Um, he's only taken, I think, eight carries coming into this game and had far more than that today. He had four in the first half. Yeah. It and, was, he, and he scored two touchdowns. Yes, right, just yeah, and then two more receiving touchdowns that he added to that. Um, and then ASU... They've been predicating this whole thing, and Herm Edwards has talked about it. Oh, we're going to run the ball. We're going to just keep – we're going to have clock management, and this is going to really be our identity. And, and that worked for one half, and then the second half, Colorado's like, oh, we'll just load the box. And it seemed like ASU's offense really just could not get going. They tried to take a few deep shots. A few of them hit. A few of them didn't. Um, but they really couldn't get that tempo going. Had two three and outs, which Edwards has also talked about. We cannot have three and outs, and two of them came right there. Not by incomplete pass, just they couldn't get the run game going. And I don't know if they have the offensive capabilities or maybe they just don't want to like air the ball out down the field and they really want to stick to the run. Maybe a three and a half to one run to pass ratio yeah. in the first half. Uh, that's I think Manny Wilkins was six for eight yeah. going into halftime. So they're definitely not going to go out there and throw the ball. Another uh, game for Manny Wilkins where he doesn't turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. Uh, where he he made his throws. He didn't. He, he hit Frank Darby on a couple of deep yeah. balls. He didn't overthrow those. Uh, and so we we see some adjustments on Manny Wilkins' part. I felt like he had a pretty solid game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there was a little bit of a disconnect between Manny Wilkins and the coaching staff on yeah. the field. Manny Wilkins can say whatever he wants after the game. He can say, "I just do what the coaches tell me." But the body language does tell a story yeah. during the game. And Arizona State having to use two timeouts early in the second half ultimately hurt their ability to stop Colorado from running out the clock. At because on one of those, it was, I think, a fourth and two, and they were right near midfield, and it looked like the offense was going to go for it. Manny was ready to get under center, and then ASU calls a timeout. He comes out of the field, throwing his hands up, throws his helmet down, and just looks pissed off. And I think there's kind of, yeah, like you were talking about, there's a disconnect from the players and the coaches about what's going to happen, and I think the players want to go for it sometimes, and then the coaches don't want to go for it, and then it seems to be vice versa the other times and I don't know if you can really sustain that for yeah. a, a good day for Manny Wilkins because they essentially have him in the role of a game manager and not a game breaker yeah. and when he's hitting those deep throws um, and, and not turning the ball over that's about as much as you can ask from him in this offense and I want to talk about this offense a little bit because social media seems to be clamoring for Rob Likens' job. But two 13-play drives in the first half. They score on both of those. They score on three of their first four offensive possessions, almost four out of their first five because obviously they get down yeah. inside the five-yard line. Um, but I, listening to Rob Likens talk, he talks about things going wrong as things that are getting him off schedule. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like... Um, it's uh, an inability of Arizona State to adjust to adversity yeah. as far as play calling, or do you think it's a matter of what people on social media seem to think is that the guy's just bad at his job? No, I think it's that they really don't know how to adjust well enough like in the game. And he talks about it sometimes, and when he's on the booth, it'll be there's this connection between him and the players and the coaches where sometimes Charlie Fisher will hand his headset to Manny or Nikhil, and they're trying to just draw up plays on the sidelines. and. Obviously, that, that can work sometimes of when you're drawing a play up and maybe you catch him on something. And he said, and Rob Likens said that on the deep Frank Darby pass that I think got him down to the three, that was just drawn up. But at some point, you can't just be drawing up plays in the second half when you really need a big play. These need to be things that you just have and you can go to and you feel very confident about. And this shouldn't be just kind of a, a guessing game, I guess, when they're, they're going into these 
crucial situations. Yeah. Uh, Danny Gonzalez, uh, ASU defensive coordinator Danny Gonzalez, seemed pretty upset after the game with yeah. with uh, Arizona State's effort, with their inability to uh, to stop Colorado. But he also said something that was interesting to me. He pretty much said that they underestimated LaVisca Chenault, yeah. which I didn't really know it was possible <laughs> to do. You have film on this guy, you realize, you know, they go to him every time. They treat LaVisca Chenault like many ASU fans wish that Arizona State treated yes. Nikhil Harry, which is to still manage to, in the balance of the offense and the flow of the offense, get him the ball repeatedly. He had six touches in the first half of the UCLA game where he went off last week. In this first half, he had 12 touches, and he looked really good. Because they know how to, like, this is the thing that I think ASU fans are probably mad about with Rob Likens is that Colorado just knows how to get him the ball in different scenarios. It was like, okay, we – it took him a while to get the ball to him in the passing game, so we'll just put him in a direct snap and we'll get him the ball that way. Then he makes an impact there, oh, we'll put him out and get him on a slip screen. It seems like whatever's thrown their way, they can put him in situations. It seems like with ASU, it's like, we're gonna design this. On this play, we're gonna give it to Nikhil. And then it's like, they're trying to balance out other things instead of, this is your best player, give him the ball. Let the defense dictate how you're gonna get him the ball. Eno Benjamin, 22 touches in the first half uh, and obviously they make the adjustment they load the box in the second half but to be honest they kind of got away from using Eno Benjamin at all yeah. toward the end of the game it seems like ASU is either all or, or nothing on you know, running the ball <laughs> passing the ball yeah. um, it, it, it is definitely an interesting experiment right they've lost three games Herm Edwards feels like they could have won all three games that they lost I feel the same way uh, but in this situation it really feels like it really feels like it comes down to execution, yeah. but also ultimately a couple of coaching decisions that leave Arizona State to wonder, can they make things right before Stanford? Mm -hmm. Because I think like you were saying too, that discrepancy, um, it's either they hit the long ball or they run the ball. It's like, how many times have we really seen a little, like a 10, 12 yard back shoulder fade to someone, like where they're just kind of moving the chains with passes. It's either we're gonna get 50 yards on a pass or we're gonna get eight yards on a run. And I don't know if there's anything in the middle right now that we've seen consistently that can show that this offense can kind of operate in any situation against any team and kind of sustain that for an entire game or really an entire season. Uh, defensively, um, that you know the the lanes, the running lanes yeah. were very very big for McMillan. Mm -hmm. uh, Jalen Harvey came crashing down, and if if not for him, and if not for the fact that McMillan doesn't really put on any moves, he just yeah. hits the hole, and that's the end of it. The end of the hole is the end of the run. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't for Jalen Harvey crashing down and stopping, I mean, this game probably could have gotten out of hand yeah. because it, it's pretty rare that you see uh, guys go through the line of scrimmage untouched yeah. upwards of ten times in a game. Mm -hmm. What does Arizona State yeah. need to do? do? Do they need have your front? Do they need to make some adjustments to the 3-3-5? Three, three, what is it that Arizona State, State can do? Because if, if they're not getting pressure on the opposing quarterback mm -hmm. and they're not disrupting the line yeah. of scrimmage on a regular basis, what is this defense doing? I know, because I think there's something, too, of maybe the personnel isn't right. I know Danny Gonzalez has talked about that, and this isn't really the personnel that they want to run for a 3-3-5, but they don't really have any options right now. Obviously down the road, they want to get a bigger defensive line to kind of even that out. Um, but I think there's a thing too, because when Chase Lucas is getting burned by these passes, they can't really load the box because they know that's just gonna keep happening. So I think there's kind of a hesitation to load the box and stop McMillan um, because they're kind of so weary of what's happening in the secondary. Now, when Herm Edwards came in, he talked a lot about identity. Uh, and he, you know, he, Stanford was mentioned. Stanford's coming up, and Arizona State has shown that they're really going to be dedicated to the run. Uh, and and what I do seem to see a little bit of is while they do want to establish an identity, they're also pretty much coaching game in and game out based on what they see the other team do. Yeah. And when you're doing that, you're not establishing who yeah. you are yeah. and and saying this is the best of what I have to offer. Mm -hmm see if you can stop it with what yeah. the best you have to offer and today I feel like they saw a team that actually does that in Colorado do you feel that Arizona State is in a situation where they need to rely a little bit more on their weapons mm -hmm. or do you feel like this situation of coaching them up situationally yeah. will put Arizona State in a position to at least make a bowl game no I think they need to use their weapons when you have Nikhil Harry you have to get him the ball I think you you tweeted like is Nikhil Harry even on this team and that was kind and of the same the, could be said for Isaiah Floyd yep. for Traylon Smith for 
a pass catching tight end of, of, of any kind, mm -hmm. um, there, there are definitely some issues w with this team. Yeah. And when, when uh, Nikhil Harry only gets targeted five times, uh, has three receptions for 60 yards, one minute into the second quarter, yeah. doesn't catch another pass after that, it's going to be a problem. Uh, and you've heard this all the time where great quarterbacks and great receivers will say, oh, it's not a 50 50 ball, it's a 70 30 ball. Well, it's a zero percent ball because they're not even giving him the option of really going up and get it like Correct. they give him so much praise and they say how great he is but they don't really give him a shot to, to kind of show that and I mean sometimes maybe it's the Manny Wilkins like not throwing an interception and they really want to keep him away from throwing interceptions sometimes you just got to throw the ball up I mean they have Frank Darby made two unreal catches and Brandon Ayuk really hasn't been used in this offense kind of the way we thought he was going to be during the fall and sometimes I think you just have to trust your playmakers and not really try and beat the defense to have your playmakers beat the defense not your plays so here we are out at Folsom Field where ASU continues to take what they're given and not take what they want. Arizona State at 3-3 three and three will face Stanford after the bye week. Uh, for Jordan K., I'm Ralph Amston. This is DevilsDigest.com.